this is uh, basically I'm, I'm going to try and give a very brief and uh, fairly rapid introduction to uh, to a concept called the, uh, of the semantic web. Um, this is something that is an area of um, computing that I've been doing uh, doing research in for the last oh, three or four years now. Um, and basically, it, it's uh, it's an idea that was really started by Tim Berners-Lee, and it's his vision uh, initially was his vision of where he thought the World Wide Web would be going. Uh, it does seem to be going that way, so he at least has had a significant influence on on the development of, of certain parts of the web. Um, first piece of semantics. Semantic, from the Oxford English Dictionary, meaning one is something to do with weather. Um, meaning two, relating to signification or meaning. Um, and the semantic web is basically all about making web pages machine readable. That's the, that's the main thing. It's trying to develop systems where you can present the information that's normally on a web page for, re for reading by, by people and make that information in some way machine readable and machine understandable so that machines can get the, s the same kind of uh, information out of the web page as a human reading it would be able to. If you can make, machine, if you can make web pages readable by computers you can then look at several web pages and combine that information and then if you can combine the information from different sources you can then start looking at uh, what's called inference or reasoning where you can get computers to make what are from from a human point of view fairly simple but uh, logical steps to say well if this is true from that web page and this is true from that web page then this must also be true. And from, from this point, you can then start going on to, to do other things like have in, uh, semi-intelligent autonomous agents which could, for example, handle your, handle your diary. So you say to your agent, I want to, book, uh, I want to book a dentist appointment in the next week. And your agent will go away and talk and find out from the dentist's agents when the uh, you know, when the best fit between the slots available from the dentist and and the times that you can go, uh, and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about actually doing it all yourself. This is uh, a famous diagram. I don't think any talk on the semantic web would be complete without it. Um, it's it's known as the wedding cake, and I think I've got four copies of it in this talk. It shows basically the, the stack of concepts and technologies that you need in order to, to achieve um, Berners-Lee's big vision of where all these things are going. At the moment, we're up somewhere around here, possibly pushing up to here a bit. Um, that's the sort of so the, the current top end of the state of the art is probably somewhere around this point in, in academic research. Stuff that's practical to use probably stops at about here. Um, if you're feeling, uh, if you're feeling moderately bloody-minded about it and actually don't mind writing bits of code and so on. Um, so starting at the bottom, URI is just a fancy name for a URL. There is a subtle difference, but I'm never quite sure what it is. Um, URI is uniform resource identifiers. You've got Unicode for making sure that you can cover everything in, in a single, single character encoding. Built on top of those, you've then got XML and XML namespaces. XML query and XML schema. XML schema you can use for defining um, new XML tag types. Those are all fairly well understood and people know how to use those and they're a nice 
stable libraries for, for dealing with these things. And then we start moving on to these grey bits, which are really the, the core of what the, of what the current semantic web technologies are all about. And the main one is RDF. And the basic principle of RDF is that you can take some object, in this case, uh, sorry, everything in RDF has a URL. So you can take some object like a web page, and you can say, this web page was written by me. Now, in RDF, I just said everything has a, has a URL. So in fact, what you'd say is something like that in your RDF. So you'd say this web page and this, this URL is from a, a thing called Dublin Core. And basically, Dublin Core is a standard that specifies that this URL, with the creator at the end, is a relationship that says that this thing was created by this thing where this thing is something that I've said that represents me. And you can combine RDF. So you can combine these, these RDF relationships. So for example, if we take, say, the, uh, the web page of the World Wide Web 2006 conference, which was organized by ECS here and was, uh, took place up in Edinburgh, you could say that was organized by this person and this person has email, such and such. And we can get that information off the www06 web website. If you go to a different web page within the site, you may find a list of the, all the talks. So they say this conference has this talk, this talk, this talk, this talk. This talk was given by this person, and this talk has slides at this URL. You may then go to, say, Dave DeRaw's web page, and you'll find that it says Dave DeRaw has email address this. Um, this web page, which is his home page, was written by him, and he's got a talk. And you can then combine all of those things together, and you can see that you start getting fairly complex interrelated data structures. Um, so, for example, now you've combined these things, you can see that he's actually got two email addresses. There's a couple of different ways of writing RDF down. Um, this is the, the traditional one, RDF XML. It's fairly verbose. It's incredibly difficult to read. Um, well, I find it incredibly difficult to read anyway. But you can see again you've got, this is a description about this thing um, and it's got a type which is that thing and it's part of this thing. It's also part of, it's, it's just about readable. It's a much simpler one, that's exactly the same information as I've just shown you. That's called N3 or turtle. And you've got this thing has type region, has type geographical location, has name this, is part of this, is part of that. Um, I'm just, uh, just to give you a, a flavour of what those, uh, uh, what those look like. So the RDF is basically this bottom, this bottom layer of grey here. It's the RDF model bit. And the, the syntax I've just shown you at least two different ways of doing it. There's several other ways of representing RDF, but those are the two main ones. Now, you can start getting a little fancier. So, fairly simple example. We've got a person, Roald Dahl. We have three things, the BFG, the tale of Henry Sugar, and boy. And each of these things, don't know what they are, but there's this thing called the BFG, there's this thing called the Tale of Henry Sugar, and there's this thing called Boy, all have author Roald Dahl. Now, we could start saying a little more about these things, so we could say that the BFG is a novel. So just give it a type. We can say that the Tale of Henry Sugar is a short story. And we can say that Boy is a biography. 
and even with just adding these types we can now say uh, we can now go to a web page or a set of web pages which collect these pieces of RDF on them and then run a query which says find me all the novels written by Roald Dahl or find me all the short stories written by Roald Dahl and there are query technologies that make it fairly easy to write those queries what happens if you want to say find me all of the fiction by Roald Dahl you then need to say with this you then need to say find me all the novels and all the short stories that's two separate queries and then you combine the results that's not particularly easy because if you then want to add say a novella type and a play type and oh um, think of another type uh, screenplay type those are all works of fiction and you'd then need to keep modifying your query to pull out all the works of fiction so let's start getting a little bit cleverer we can say that a biography is a type of non-fiction short stories and novels are both types of fiction and non-fiction and fiction are both types of public, published work so we've got each of these yellow things is basically uh, is a class of, of object we can say that hello um, we can say that uh, so if you've got something which is a biography it is also a work of non-fiction if you've got something which is a work of non-fiction it is also in this schema it is also a published work I'm, obviously there's places where that's not true but what you can then do is if you've set up these yellow things on uh, these, uh, this schema of all the yellow bits you can then get a computer with particular rules to do automated reasoning and so what you can do from here is you can say well the BFG is a novel but we know that all novels are works of fiction so the BFG is also a work of fiction all works of fiction are published works so it's also a published work and you can do the same thing for the other two as well so now you've added all of these extra reasoned uh, pieces of knowledge this, this, is, this is actually developing additional knowledge that wasn't in the original data set you can now say quite easily find me all the works of fiction by Roald Dahl because you've generated these extra links and that's one of the, one of the really powerful things about these, uh, these concepts so the RDF schema gives you the ability to set up these types of um, hierarchies Oops. and they're called schemas and there's a, I'm, I'm sorry that there's a thing called the O word which we don't normally mention because it frightens people it's an ontology um, an ontology I found this one on the web is a specification of a conceptualization now I don't know what that means either um, basically it's a vocabulary uh, it's a vocabulary and a, for classes and sets of relationships and there's the, the simplest ontology language uh, is RDFS RDF schema RDF schema allows you to define classes so uh, collections of things and subclass relationships between those between those classes you can define properties so you can say um, there is a property which is is author of you can say there is a property which is um, is type of that's actually built in uh, you could say that um, oh, so and so has web page this um, you could say so and so has an email address of this you could say so and so um, has first name of this and you can also specify the range and the domain of properties so that you can say that if, if you've got a property of say it was written by then 
the thing on the left hand side of the property is always uh, is always a, a work of sorry is always a published work and the thing on the right hand side is always a person so if you've got so it's always person was sorry other way around work of fiction was written by person hello um, getting more sophisticated there's a thing called owl which is the web ontology language um, as we all know from Winnie the Pooh uh, Al knew how to spell his own name um, Al provides a few other a few things on top of RDFS so you can in Al for example it gives you a method of, of, of asserting identity so for example I may say this URL refers to me as an individual ECS, my employer, may say, ah, oh, but in our database, this other URL refers to Hugo Mills. And what we can do is we can, we can assert an L same as between those two URIs. Uh, basically to say that whilst the URIs are different, they refer to the same thing. In L, you can also express disjunction. So you can say that two classes are disjoint. Uh, so a thing can be in either one class or another but not in both um, you can specify things like uh, number restrictions so you can say that must be at least so many of a particular property or there must be no more than so many of a particular property that's a funny one that doesn't actually prevent you from stating more than n of, the pr of a particular property um, but it does mean that you can say that afterwards this is inconsistent because we have more than n statements of this particular property um, and there's a whole big bunch of other stuff that uh, that owl can do it comes in various flavors owl light is very simple um, probably just covers these I think uh, owl DL uh, I'm not going to say what the DL stands for. LDL is more complicated, but is still handleable within uh, with fairly simple algorithms. Owl full is really, really powerful and really, really ugly, and is almost impossible to deal with um, for various uh, awkward mathematical reasons. But basically, if you're running algorithms on an owl full or on a system described in owl full, you can't guarantee it's actually going to finish. Whereas with LDL, you can guarantee it's going to finish, and you can guarantee it'll finish fairly quickly, I think. And owl light, you can, it'll definitely finish quickly. Um, some of the things that, if you're developing web pages, some of the things you can do, you can mark up web pages uh, by hand if you've got hand generated information. If you've got any databases at all that present information as web pages, it's actually fairly easy to add a bit of code that will generate an, a bit of RDF that represents the data in that page and if you have uh, if you can't find an ontology to do what you want if you're feeling up to it you can use and develop new ones they're actually they're fairly simple to do if you know the field that you want to talk about um, a whole bunch of tools um, um, at this point to head off over here um, this is a tool called Protégé um, basically it gives you a method of editing editing ontologies so this is one I made earlier for describing uh, a particular work of fiction um, we have a list of classes down here you can see yeah a list of I've defined a class called actor this has two sub yeah, I wish it would, wouldn't it? has two subclasses there and then this this one has additional subclasses so we can categorize all of the the actors that the individuals interacting within this work of fiction in this uh, this class hierarchy then 
here are some of those individuals. So we've got 236 humans in, in this particular system, and there they all are. And let's pick a good one. There. There's a whole bunch of different properties. So we can see that this person has this ID. He's a child of these people. He's a parent of several people. Is in a marriage with somebody. That's a, uh, a human readable version of her name. These are alternative versions of her name. Uh, we've got a gender. Don't know what her birth date is. Um, don't know what her death date is. So, and you can specify lists of properties as well. So if I pick something like, uh, where are we? Lost it. There we are, child of. So we've got a property child of, and in this case, the, the things on either side of a child of property must be actors of some kind, but we don't specify uh, which kind of actor. So that, that's protege, and you can use that for developing uh, both schemas, schemas or ontologies and also for putting, for putting data in. So that and that together form my, my schema, and that's my data. And this may or may not work. But you can uh, where is it? That's the one. this is going to work. There we are. So I've selected this person. And you can see all the relationships up to depth of six from him. And you can see I mean, this took maybe a, a day or so to put in from a, a, an appendix in the back of one of the books. And you can follow all of these relationships round. So that's, that's a child of, parent of relationship between these two people. Um, and then you've got things like, yeah. <laughs> it's because I've selected a new centre. So that there's a marriage relationship in there between these two people. Um, so. It's, it's, that's one of the ways of presenting these things. You can also... Sorry? It's very neat. It is. You can also present similar, similar types of information in slightly less interesting ways. Um, this is quite old. Um, this is sort of one of, the, one of the first really big semantic web projects. Uh, these guys went round... Um, all of the computer science departments in the UK and wrote um, web scrapers that visited their web pages every night, scraped the information off and dumped it into a big RDF database uh, which they'd written. Uh, if you've got a, a data, an RDF database, because uh, you can store RDF in, effectively in a native form, uh, it tends to get called a triple store. So this is triplestore.actors.org So this is the uh, this is the, the information for a particular individual it's one of the professors in the department here so you can see we've got family name Shadbolt, full name NR has appellation professor, email address fax numbers lots of pictures 
so let's see if I can get that no <laughs> can't maybe I can do that so it's a picture of Wendy and Nigel Um, so there's all the pictures he's in, these are the journals he's edited, these are the papers he's been author of. It's projects he's leader of, project he's a member of, research interests, secretary. And so on you can basically same as I told you it was useful. Even with, yeah, with something like this, it's, it can still be difficult to work out who you're talking about. Um, you can't just pick names. Um, so, for example, there's a, uh, there's a case here in ECS, which I'm sure everyone will, will agree is, um, you know, is, is quite, uh, going to be quite a common thing. Um, we have two people in the department called uh, Lejos Hanzo who both work in the same research group um, on the same subjects <laughs> uh, father and son um, and it's remarkably difficult to tell which one's which <laughs> if you're looking at a web page it's even more difficult to get a computer to tell which one's which so yeah there's this same as thing here and you can follow these things around, so is it back up to the top? Um, so if I again go back to this picture of Nigel and Wendy, we have depicted in, and that's Nigel, and we also have Wendy Hall. Let's see if we get Wendy. No. I shall leave that one to think for a bit. Other things that you can do with it. Uh, this is a set of chemistry publications for, of crystallography. So if I pick one of these, these are this is a, a study of that molecule. They would sent a crystal of it, and they ran it through a, an X-ray crystallography machine. And it, came up with this stuff and basically all of this information is stored in the back end in RDF and we can start doing interesting things about with some of these things like um, I want to find all of the public all of the materials published in this archive which have this particular structure within them. So, you know, if I want to find all things that have got this four carbon and one nitrogen structure, um, you should be able to search through the back end database on here and find all those materials, pull them out. Which is something which is quite difficult to do in in other other systems. Can we go back to that? Ah yes, it's finished. That's our that's the other person in that picture, which I showed earlier. Um, so, yeah, tools, Protégé have shown you. There are various programming libraries that you can use. Uh, Redland deals with just RDF. RAP deals with just RDF. Uh, Jenna deals with both RDF and OWL, so it gives, you, it gives you two different views on it. One is just the plain RDF. The other one you can say, uh, I want to collapse all of the things like class declarations um, so that you see things as being of a particular type rather than having to go and work it out for yourself. Um, if you want to store large quantities of RDF, you can use the 3Store, which is uh, the software that backs the Actors triple store. Jenna has a, um, has a database storage method as well. Jenna's quite quite good. It's developed by some guys at HP Labs. 
uh, that's the one that I, I tend to use. Um, reason is there's, again, software that will do the automated reasoning processes. There's three store, there's Jenna, there's Pellet. Um, more information. Uh, there's the W3C, uh, uh, the leaders on developing standards for these sort of things. That's a very good document to read. RDF concepts that actually gives you the basics of what RDF is and how you can use it. That's here. This is the research group I'm in. Uh, there's Jenna. Actos.org is a um, is a research project that's coming to an end now, I think, but it's still worth a look for some of its technology. MindSwap is the Maryland um, semantic web semant uh, semantic technologies research group, um, University, University of Maryland. MindSwap are, are very good people. Um, if you want to get ontologies or schemas, that's the spec for OWL. Um, Foth Project's Friend of a Friend, which you may have heard of, is all about relationships between people. So if you know, if you know somebody, you can declare using Foth, you know, I am me, this is them, and I know them. Doubling calls is a very simple thing for talking about um, the origin of documents. So who created a document, who's contributed to a document, um, things like ISBNs and so on. Um, basically sort of library, library kind of things. And the Damal Ontologies page has, I think, about 280 different, different ontologies in a library that you can search through and find things. So I've probably gone too fast and tried to cover too much and haven't gone into any of it in enough detail, but if anyone wants to ask questions now or talk about it later, I'm quite willing to. So you mentioned marking up web pages. Yes. So you said that you could take an existing web page and mark it up with that Yeah. How do you go about that? Um, typically what you can do is you can, you can either put a link on the page. Uh, hang on. Let's go back to there. You can either put a link on the page itself so like that. Things like the Dublin core you can put just in meta tags in the header, Yeah, I think there's a there's a form of Dublin core you can put in meta tags. Um, you can either do that so that people know that there's RDF RDF there to be to be seen. And I'm not sure if it's on here, but you can also put in the meta tags. Oh, sorry, in the links. Um, there it is. Link rel equals alternate, type equals application, RDF plus XML. And, that, and then you can parse through a particular page and, and pull out that link and follow it to get, to get just a plain RDF 